The Internet of Things, or IoT, is transforming our world. It comprises billions of sophisticated objects such as sensors, actuators and meters that are connected to the Internet. These objects, things or devices have often limited capacity in terms of memory storage, computational power and energy. They can be deployed nearly everywhere in homes, hospitals, factories, cities and they can even be attached to or implanted in human bodies. A given network of objects must be carefully designed for its target application. Among these IoT-based applications, industrial IoT is an emerging domain aiming to improve factory automation and reduce its management cost. Efficient automation and cost reduction can be achieved in particular by potentially replacing the existing cables with wireless links. However, wireless communication is usually less reliable than wired links. This is due to many factors such as external interferences, obstacles or distance between the devices. It is thus challenging to use wireless communication in an industrial network because an industrial network must be robust in terms of network reliability and timely delivery of the transmitted information. Let's take an example. Rail transport. Multiple trains share the same infrastructure while serving different stations moving at different speeds and yet they manage to avoid collisions and arrive usually on time. All of this is possible thanks to a precise schedule which defines which train will use which tracks at which time. So how can we set up wireless communication and networking for industrial IoT? We may use two different possible topologies, either the start topology, where the devices communicate directly with the gateway, or the mesh topology, where some of the devices operate as relays for others without direct communication with the gateway. In order for two devices to communicate, we can schedule collision-free communications based on a time-slotted and frequency hopping technique, which is called TSCH. To build and manage an industrial network, we have the routing protocol named RPL, said Ripple. It allows devices of a network to learn their paths toward a given destination. It is based on IPv6 and it belongs to the family of distance vector routing protocols. Different network metrics such as the link quality, latency or throughput may be used to select a neighboring device to forward packets. Connecting a device to the internet in a future-proof way requires that it supports IPv6 it is important to keep in mind that objects have limited networking as well as processing capacity. Thus, the size of the exchange messages in the network should be as low as possible. It follows that some adaptation mechanisms will also be required to support IPv6. There is the compression mechanism which reduces the size of the packets and the fragmentation mechanism which splits the large IPv6 packet into smaller ones called fragments. Mm -hmm.